You're back! And in one piece, I see. No thanks to you and the damned crystal. Where did it take you? What did you see? Neither you mind where we went or what we saw. It's what it might mean that's important here. Quickly, we must make haste. To the Art Museum! Hello everyone, it's Dave from the LARP Noobs. Just to give you a heads up, there is a bit of background noise in this episode caused by a delightful log fire. We hope it isn't too distracting for you. We are also starting a Patreon. Um, If you'd like to support more content like this, um, you are welcome to donate, but obviously no pressure whatsoever. So without further ado, please sit back, relax and enjoy the episode. Okay, and welcome back to another episode of the LARP News Podcast. Um, very special and I'm very privileged to be joined by a couple of the photographers that attend Empire and other LARPs uh, around the UK. Um, if you'd just like to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Hi, I'm Beth Duna. I am one of the crew photographers at Empire and I've been doing this hobby for about four years now and I really enjoy it. Hi, I'm Oliver Facey, um, photographer at uh, Empire doing double duty as a magistrate and I do about 40 events a year, although I'm trying to cut down um, <laughs> and I've been doing this for about 10 years now. Yeah, so just a, I, I picked up Oliver and we had to, had to do a two hour drive and most of that drive was full of us talking about how many different events you're attending and um, I think me and Ian are both kind of learning about this giant world of LARP oh. that yeah. is... Every single weekend, it seems to be that there's a different LARP going on, right? Oh, yeah. Pretty much. I did yeah. 30, no, 32 back-to-back last year, total of 45. Yeah, I've done... I think my highest was 19 one year, although, bear in mind, I don't drive, and I don't really... I, I do work, but I'm freelance, so it's a bit mm-hmm. <laughs> of how much money I mm-hmm. get. But, yeah, I've, um, I've attended quite a few events and tried to attend like a lot of first time events, um, but you know, mm. different sizes and stuff. It is mm-hmm. just insane how many. Well, there's there also are. there's also like a, a weird LARP network going on, right? So it seems as though like like I was talking to Oliver about this, how this, some familiar faces go to some LARPs and you'll see the same people over and over again, but those kind of like merge into depending on the subject matter and all that stuff. There's different heads going to different yeah. events, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so just a, let's start with Beth. Beth, how did you start doing LARP photography? Um, so I actually come from the cosplay scene. Um, so I'm one of those um, ones who came in a bit more recently because I know from listening to previous podcasts, a lot of people come from tabletop. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of my friends who was a cosplayer um, got introduced to it by her friends and um, I was at university doing photography and I was entering my third year and I needed a new project to do. And I've been doing a lot of cosplay photography projects, but I just really wanted to do something new. And she suggested, why don't you try doing, you know, live action roleplay photography? Mm-hmm. And I sent out a few emails and, um, yeah, I was um, I was brought along as a player for each one. So I paid for my ticket, uh, brought my camera along and just absolutely fell in love with it. I loved doing it. I loved, like, the response people gave. And I liked how much it was pushing me as a photographer. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've basically kept doing it ever since. Mm-hmm. Nice. And Oliver, how about you? So, I mean, I, I started LARPing itself back in about 98, um, but then I was crewing a game called EOS uh, that has since uh, finished its run, but that was uh, when I first started taking photographs at, a, at an event. I was a barkeep, and just the first event, I just took a, um, a cheap little compact camera. The following event, um, my next-door neighbour lent me a um, DSLR his dad had sold him, Mm-hmm. Um, and then I took it along to another event, and that that was that. I was I was hooked. Yeah, I've said this before, and I can't remember which episode I said it, but the there's something about the the the, the medium of photography that seems to translate really well for LARP in general. Like I think we can all agree that video just takes a lot of the magic away from it, yes. right? And there's something about taking a still image at the right time at the right place that just says. Like was it a, a picture? It speaks a thousand words or whatever. Yeah, I think it's yeah. very true in some of the photographs I've seen from both of you. You know, yeah. Well, we've often had moments at event <clears> where we've like shown each other the back of our cameras, gone, look what I got, look what I got, and like, um, mm-hmm. or I've said I saw something really cool. Um, I hope it came out in focus. Mm-hmm. Like I hope mm-hmm. I got it. Um, and then just like holding your breath as you're going through the photos, going was it in focus, was it in focus, and then either cheers of jubilation or anger when how did you feel like 
what are you what are you looking for when you're setting up the show? I'm, I've, you've got your camera. You're setting off for this new event. What are you what are you looking for to find when you're looking for the viewfinder? Um, I mean, usually I like to get the 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 feel of the characters um, primarily because I mean, I, I one of the reasons I started was that I slightly selfishly I didn't get many shots of myself while mm-hmm. playing, so I thought. I'd like to make sure that everyone gets a decent shot of them when they're at an event. So I do tend to be quite prolific in terms of the number of shots I'll actually take because I'll try and get as many people in. And I don't, you know, I want to be um, as inclusive as possible in that. Mm-hmm. So it, it just depends. You, you follow the players around. I tend to stay quite close to them so I can hear uh, what's important for them and their characters. Because, okay, I could keep my distance and you can still get lovely shots from a distance but um, it's difficult to work out what is important for moments for the, for the characters that are there unless you're up close and hear what they're talking about so it's so interesting you said that because Matt Pennington was saying he created the game he wanted to play and mm-hmm. I've definitely made the podcast I wanted to listen to right and I think there's something <laughs> there's the creator's bane right or something yes. that you you're doing the thing that you'd actually quite like to have that you get to enjoy but you you're on the one end of having to take on that mantle. Oh, yeah. If I ever get married, I want to photograph my own wedding, but I can't. (laughs) Right, (laughs) yeah, totally. I know, I get it. Yeah, Um, And how about you? What are you you kind of looking at when you kind of leave? So a lot of time it depends on the size of the game. So if it's a much smaller game, often we really are able to follow stories. Um, And I know games that both Ollie and I have have attended together, sometimes, like I've kind of said so-and-so is about to do this, let's go. Like, no, you're going the wrong way. This is the more interesting thing. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe split up and then do one of you does one thing. Oh, yeah. Like, the other. There's a game we both attend, which until very recently was basically one long piece of land and there was one camp at one end and one camp at the other end. And we did say, okay, you go to this camp, I go to this camp for like the final battle or something because there was just no way that we could both cover it. It was too far away. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was like a lot of good teamwork there but uh, for much bigger games um, I like to kind of look at illustrations and uh, film cinematography and film production stills and try and get very cinematic moments Mm -hmm. Um, but also just like like you say like a picture speaks a thousand words like what what word is like a comma what I mean what image is like a comma what image you know, is that calm moment before the storm? Um, mm-hmm. What what can you learn about a person, a place, in that image? And you know, much of it is just what the game throws at you. And heck, even sometimes what the weather throws at you. It's mm-hmm. like the, the weather doing something is going to give you a very different story of the weekend. Yeah, I've seen on both of yours some really um, both of yours. So actually, we should. Uh, what are your websites so people can play along while we're uh, talking about it? Beth, you, uh, my main website is www.bethduner.co.uk. And that's D O O N E R. Yes. S. No, no, without the S. No, 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 don't do the S. <laughs> All right, cool. Oliver, what's yours? <clears throat> so mine is um, gallery. Okay. I can vouch, by the way, if you just Google their names, a lot of their stuff will actually just pop up. So um, have a look. I'll leave yeah. I'll, I'll leave them in the description of I've the episode. I've got like anyway. associated blogs as well, which are just as f- f- valid and fine, but mm-hmm. that is my main website. But I've noticed there's like, um, like these, there's a few scenes where you have like these really tender moments between two players. And I'm just kind of curious how you, do you feel intrusive when you're doing that? Or, or how do you feel about it, right? Because... Some of them look really intimate, right? Slightly. I mean, especially on smaller games, I'll, I'll try and tell people at the beginning, don't be conscious about the presence of a photographer because I operate the same takedown policy that um, we have at Empire, which is if a person in a shot doesn't like it, it disappears and no one ever sees it again. Mm-hmm. So I'm quite happy to take photographs of those difficult scenes knowing that I've told them that if they don't like it, it will disappear. And similarly, there have been um, times where uh, people have been, you know, crying their eyes out on the field, and I'll find out who they are and send them a spread and say, which ones are you happy with going going up public? And it's really nice to have them come back and say, oh, that, that really shows my character. I'm quite happy for this one and that one to go up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a good thing that we should talk about is like the the mentality of takedown requests is is taken very seriously from what I can tell. Yeah. Um, 
and that was something that was communicated quite early on when we were at Empire and it, in pretty bad when I went to Blind Dogs as well it's if you don't like the photograph just say and it's, it's gone you know what I mean okay. so I think as a yeah. if you're a new to LARP don't feel too self-conscious around having a photographer around you but yeah, yeah. how do you feel about the, the intimate nature of shots um, well the way I kind of see it is um, is to try and be that cameraman who accidentally appears in the background of some films um is so let's say two people are crying, their heads are rested on each other, it's fading to a moment. I don't want to be like right in the middle of that going, hello, don't mind me. Um, but they might see me like a, like a bit of a speck in the corner of their eye. Because you often see it, um, they'll glance at you, then glance away. So they've acknowledged you there and they, they go back to the role play. Because mm-hmm. like I said, the main thing is you want to be as unintrusive as possible, but you're still a corporal human being. Yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna spoil the moment by trying to capture it, right? Yeah, but there. you still wanna capture it because I know um there was a scene, one of them, where someone was carried into a tent and he was dying, everyone was crying, and someone saw me go in and said I did like a private yes to myself because yeah. I, well, yeah. I knew it was going to be captured and I was like because I was chatting to afterwards and said I was so worried that I'd ruin the moment by going like sticking my hand in the air going in and having my jacket on um, but like I said no we, we all had a moment of going oh yes yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote you actually in a video that you made for um, Scarlett Haley King you're yes. in a video you can YouTube this if you just type in Beth's name you'll come up but you said um you try and capture what people are seeing. Okay? Yeah. Now that's... If, you, if you've if never been to LARP, I think that would be an extremely abstract thing and you wouldn't really understand what that meant. I think any LARP would really get what you mean by that because we talk about it as the idea of there's a... After the event, or even during the event sometimes, there's a movie filter that happens to your memory. Mm. Okay? So like... Say if I'm in a battle and everything's raging on, I'm aware of referees, I'm aware of photographers, I'm aware of the safe stuff, but give it four or five days after the event, all of that is kind of like muted in the background and it's just a goddamn action movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think that's quite an interesting way that I think both of your photography really carries that through. And in fact, while we're we're on the subject, how are battles? How do they, (laughs) like, and combat in general? Test your fitness, for sure. Um, Well, for me, because I do like to photograph what people see, but I also... Like, with my own kind of artistic way, do you like to try and show the fact that there is a behind the scenes? Like, one of my favourite shots I've I've ever gotten was the Sentinels Gate at Empire. You can see uh, soldiers lining up to, to go through, but I've stepped back a bit and you can see the referees either side. So mm-hmm. that, to me... Is oh, awesome. I, know that, I know exactly the shot you're talking about. Yay! Yeah. And I, do you know what? It's good, funny, it is as good as I thought no, it was. No, it's funny that you mention it because it is a wonderful... Because um, you're, you're the observer observing the observers observing the players right yeah. and there's a and the, and the framing of the archway in there and is, we're observing it yeah then. it's uh yeah it's a wonderful little um like layered image of like understanding of the situation that's happening at that yeah, moment yeah it's almost like a diorama really oh massively yeah uh, definitely but battles <laughs> uh, yeah they really test your mental power and physical power do you ever get like caught on the wrong side of a charge yes. or something. Oh, oh yes, yes. yes. They're both yeah. nodding profusely. Let, let's that, terrify yeah. for Ollie because you're much taller than me. Yes, yes. I mean, there, there was one um, sequence of shots. I was, went in with a with a quite a wide lens and I was kneeling down in front of some people and I heard their commander tell them, give them the order to charge and I knew I had no chance of getting <laughs> so, so I just hunkered down, made myself as small as possible and carried on taking photographs. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was nice to see all these orcs rush past. Um, and then occasionally you get stuck in a, in a crush towards the back mm. of a um, line. It, I think there was one earlier in the year at the back of the fort. And I was like, well, I, I'm just going to have to put my hand. I was my, there. Yeah. That was a crush, though, wasn't yes. it? The referees did a really good job of trying to move people forward. But yeah. it was, I mean, it was like a mosh pit at times in there. A safe yeah. mosh pit, but it yes. was squishy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. See, I had some of that happen. And my laces were undone. <laughs> Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, photo, oh, no. <laughs> have, you, have you ever, like, actually got, like, knocked over in a, a melee or anything like that? I've had, like, someone's armour bash into me, um, like it was, like, their pauldron or something, and just the edge record. But thankfully, part of the safety is yeah. that if the edge does catch someone... Mm-hmm. It's, it's not going to, it's not yeah. sharp, right? But it was still, like, it was more of a surprise that kind of... 
namely gas. Um, to be honest, it's mostly the terrain which gets me more than other people. Like suddenly, I know the woods are empire. Suddenly, there's a rabbit hole, and I'm down it. Yeah, massively. I found that even I'm talking as a player, let alone trying to look for a viewfinder. Like you're so engaged in what's happening around you that sometimes you can forget that your feet need to actually mm-hmm. be on flat bits mm-hmm. and not like fall over. Right. So there was um, um, there was someone earlier in the year. Yeah, I think he walked backwards uh, while I had a camera up to my eye, which bumped into him. he was like it, it wasn't too fast but um, although the, the, the cameras I use that being mirrorless I tend to shoot on the back screen rather than through the viewfinder mm-hmm. so it does help with your peripheral vision because you can see everything that's going around you mm-hmm. Rather okay, than... so if you're taking anything from this whole thing, just try and be polite to photographers, yeah. okay? Don't don't stomp <laughs> on them or bash Although, into them. I'm going to take over asking questions for a minute. Ollie, how many arrows have you been hit by? Not that many. Well, I... a, 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 probably a dozen in total. That's a dozen, <laughs> that's a dozen too many. Wow. <laughs> Are you saying that they're deliberately <clears throat> aiming at you? No, 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 no. I, I have felt I mean... bad by walking in... The, I, I don't think they are. They might be aiming at you, but... People like me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I know I have like walked in the way of a shot, which would have totally landed. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I have no sympathy for archers whatsoever. No, they should <laughs> may all their shots miss, and their arrows <laughs> never be found. That's my feeling. Sort of. And pretty much every event I've been to, I've caught an arrow in the face. It's oh, never hurt, no. but it's more yeah. like. Man, in the face, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's always in the face. One did knock my glasses off one time. I was like, oh, Yeah, I've got glasses it. as well. It's an issue, right? Yeah. No, I haven't been hit in the face. Been hit in the mouth. Been hit in the mouth a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, although at Blind Dogs last weekend, one of the crew did shoot me in the back of the head. Um, <laughs> but it was dark and I had my back to him, so I'm not really going to complain That's too the world much. of Blind Dogs right there, basically. <laughs> um, it's short or it's be short, basically. It's kind of title, really. Yes. <laughs> oh, I say. wanted to ask you, do you ever get people... Awkwardly trying to pose and get yes. in the shot. Yes, yes. <laughs> to the point that I now, at the new player briefing, tell people not to do it because, like, I have had people like arm spread doing superhero pose in the middle of the battle while like d- dangerous stuff is happening around them. Like, they, they, they move. Yeah, um, but I think I've done that. I, th- I saw that one. I, I don't, it might have been one of you guys, but it's definitely a photographer. And I remember thinking, right, they're there. This is the framing. I'll stand in this way. And I remember just being like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, and it chance, was. Chances are we're looking in the opposite direction. Absolutely. Because anyway. yeah. I was we're like, I was like, that one's a guarantee. Definitely getting in that one. You know what I mean? And then, um, actually, it was Oliver, it's your shot that you've mm. got. It's the only shot I've got of me at Empire was. Mm. It was awesome. I had no idea you were there. I yes. can't remember the context of when it was taken, but yeah. it's an awesome picture. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I really that's how it. we like to operate, and yeah. that's how that's how I think it should be done, right? Like, I mean, it, occasionally we'll see someone, or they'll, they'll clock us, and they might sort of straighten their posture a little mm. and, and bristle a little. But yeah, if if someone's pulling silly poses, then it's like yeah, go away. Yeah. Um, what about like kit? Do you? Is there like a danger that sometimes you'll gravitate towards the best kit on the field and you'll get the same pictures of the same people every single event? <laughs> um. I was going to make a pal joke. I was taking a breath. Okay, who's who's pal? pal. Oh, pal. Who isn't pal? pal. <laughs> right. uh, no, well, pal, uh, I guess with that, and pal is a good example. I don't even know if you're going to use the pal segment, but there are people who we know are good sports yes. and they often also have good kits. Yeah. Um, and... You know, like, yeah, we do gravitate, gravitate towards good care, and there are people we get again and again, but a lot of it is is that I know that even if they don't like the photo much of themselves, they won't be rude about it. Mm-hmm. They will usually say something, they'll like it. Um, but some kit is just eye catching. Yeah, mm-hmm. to be fair, in defense of that, um, having been to events, those people do stand out anyway. Mm-hmm. So when I'm going through one of your like sets from an event, it brings back memories of that event for me. Even if I'm not in the pictures, right? It doesn't. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like. It's still trigger memorying from seeing those people in those pictures, you know. Yeah. And some of them are legit badass looking, right? Or, or, or the the like a, a like a female warrior wearing loads of armor and looking really tough, but in a moment of fragility is like an amazing moment, which is well worth taking a picture of, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So mm-hmm. yeah, there is. The, the, I wouldn't even call it favoritism, but there, there are people who I think we're more naturally drawn to. But it is nice to see something new as well, and it is nice to get someone who has never been got before. And when they actually say like how delighted they are, mm-hmm. like 
I mean, I at least do remember that. I do remember that they were really good sports with it. They were really, you know, enthusiastic. And it's like, okay, yeah, they they, they seem like the good sort. Yeah, I feel like people people that are trying to get the photographs done themselves, you know, say people that might make an elaborate, making a podcast, for example, then invite <laughs> photographers on that podcast. You know what I mean? Those people would be real scumbags for trying to get pictures taken of them like I that. will forget what you look like. <laughs> Please do. Honestly, I went to Blind Dogs a couple of weeks ago and Oliver was there. And I'm like, I'm still kind of in this weird... Because do you remember where we were? There was a... Um, towards the end of the session and you're really close to me you're taking a few pictures and I was just yeah. like I was like fuck I'm, I don't know what to do with myself you know what I mean like I felt really like I felt kind of silly you know what I mean like for, for mm. a moment you know yeah, um, yeah. and even we chatted so it wasn't like you were a stranger to me either yes. but um, and there was the opportunity you were taking these these wonderful uh, portraits of people right do you describe the setup because you'll describe it for better people that know but um so the, the the game itself was run in a very dark area that had very few um illumination basically lots of electric tea lights and not very much else um but just out in one area there was uh, so the the site was at bravo one and uh, it's an airsoft site so they boarded up all the windows but they apparently forgot to board one up mainly because it's in a cor- it's in a corner of a room where no one would actually hide because it's, it's, there's no cover at no, all and no, you, you'll yeah. get shot. Um, so there's this window that looks out and you get, there's some natural daylight coming in. I then augmented it with um, putting a torch in one corner, but the, the windowsill was such that you couldn't see the torch or you could see with this nice light. It was like, a, it was like a shaft of light coming out. Yeah. Right? Were those the ones you showed me? Yes, yes. They were so good. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. what I liked about them was is that they don't, they didn't seem state. They seemed like in the moment type shots, right? Mm. They, they, despite having such a, from from an external point of view, it looked very staged. But whatever was happening between the camera and being recorded was like something. You know, it was like a moment within that character. You know, yeah, very so impressive. I, I started off with them facing the camera, but towards the the last set of shots, they were just facing the windows. So mm. They weren't facing the camera at all. Mm. They were, it was just a picture of. Uh, of of them facing whatever it was they were going to be shooting or it was at, whatever. at the time I spoke to you briefly and mm. you were saying oh come and get like uh, some of these um, like these portraits done and at the yeah. time I was like no oh, I kind of feel silly I won't have that done my immediate regret after mm. the event like I was like I would have loved to have had some of those shots done and I didn't step up and do it so I would say if you are at an event and you do have an opportunity to maybe get some you put a lot of time and effort and thinking into your costumes if there's an opportunity to do and you're They'll ask, you know, it'd be pretty obvious if they are, are doing portraits, then uh, I'd highly recommend that you do step up and, yeah. yeah. And even if you aren't fully satisfied with your costume, it's a really good reference to see how it all looks together. Because mm. I know a lot of people have gone, ah, uh, this doesn't sit like I thought it would, but I know exactly how to fix it. Right. Now I've seen a full length photo of it. And some people do use it as reference. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I cut you off there. That's all right. Um, so I don't often do posed portraits. It's not a thing I like doing that much, mm-hmm. but because I found the perfect spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. Stuff, I think like it's it, like okay, I'm just going to do this yeah. because it, it'll, it'll be especially given the the light level in the rest of the the setup mm-hmm. was was really low. I mean, I'm, I'm rigged for low light and it was challenging. Yeah, let's um, talk. I mean, this is something that I'm not going to be too familiar with, but for some yeah. of those photography heads out there, could we just maybe talk about some of the kit and some of the things that if someone was new to this, what what sort of gear would you think would be a good kind of to get you into this world you know uh, yeah you go first <laughs> it, 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 it kind of depends on on what your budget is i started using canon dslrs or having a neighbor uh, who lends you one. Oh well yeah that too um <laughs> but then i found the the sony mirrorless uh, the full frame mirrorless was just lovely for me because i could one use old lenses because you can fit any lens that's ever been made for 35 mil mm-hmm. whack a lens on it and it'll work with an adapter um but the 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 mirrorless adds a lot of tools that make it useful for someone shooting LARP because it 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 does help in a lot of ways you don't need to you're seeing on the screen or on the viewfinder what you're actually taking mm. right if your exposure's off on a dslr you only know really for definite when you actually review it on the back of the camera whereas yeah. Um, on the mirrorless, it, it's it's so much easier to see what you're actually shooting. What time. sort of lenses are you packing for an event? Are you using one telephoto lens? Are you using primes? What are no, you? I'm mainly using primes. So 28 mil f to 85 one four are my usual go to combination. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, occasionally, I used to use um, a 70 to 200 f four zoom, 
but I haven't used that at all in, in months. Interesting. And would you say that's something about just you're more confident in using those lenses that you have and you don't need to use the more kind of variable length of a shot? Um, yeah, I think so. Also, I like the look of the of the primes. I like the... Yeah, yeah. who Prime, doesn't like the, primes a good prime lens? <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, my, my kit's a little less packed. Um, <laughs> I have a camera. Uh, well, I have my DSLR. I have um, an 85, 85mm lens, which I love using. That is probably my go-to. I have a 20mm for wider shots. I now have a 50mm. I did have a telephoto, but it broke. <laughs> so um, the, the telephoto was useful for battles mostly because, um, you know... I, I didn't have to run as many places mm-hmm. or if I saw something, you know, as it is far away, you know, and I'm like, I'm not going to go there in time. I have a zoom. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But now I do have to run there, which might be why I've so knackered last event because mm-hmm. I was using my 85 mil, which is, while some tape photos still quite, quite far. Yeah, I was a perfectly, lens, right? yeah. Oh yeah. It's a really lovely lens. Um, and I was perfectly safe, but it just meant I was having to run places mm-hmm. a bit more. So I was particularly knackered after that battle. And how much, let's just say, at like an average Empire event, how many photos do you reckon you'll have stored taking home with you after an event? Ollie has way more than me. Um, so <clears throat> E4 2018. Um, E4 2018 was the first time I'd gone into five figures. So nor, nor, what? Yeah, nor, <laughs> yeah. Not, not normally Empire would probably up until then was probably five to seven thousand shots. I uh, had no idea. Yeah. My ball number was so much lower. <laughs> that than isn't that. that is a normal. I just want to say. Yeah, I, I, Jesus, I, 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 he wet. changed lenses for battles so he could take a less photos. Yes, yes, I, I did. Um, so there was a last year I decided to shoot with a fully manual. Um, eighty-five mil lens Don't for, for one of the battles, stupid. and um, yeah, I, I I ended up with more shots to process because mm-hmm. there were some nicer ones in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it it sometimes goes a little mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should probably take fewer shots, but yeah, how about like a normal person, Beth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take around an empire depending on the battle conditions and stuff around three to four thousand. Wow, honestly, I had no idea. Well, I much was, of it. What, what did you have us pegged at? I, I was thinking like anything between maybe five hundred and oh god, <laughs> seven hundred and fifty. <laughs> I'm but, so naive. Yeah. Well, well that, 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 that's how many. I'll, I'll end up putting up mm. and yeah, a keeper maybe rate of and yeah. a keeper rate of ten percent. Because if because to bear in mind, what a lot of times in battles we are going click a click a click because someone's swinging. I'm not gonna lie, the faces people pull when they're swinging swords. You, oh, know? you should do an entire album of just stupid <clears throat> looking oh, faces. That would don't, be amazing. We've got so much blackmail material. Yeah. If you get anything, we are never going if you to get use. anything dumb of any of the friends that I have at Empire, you just let me know, okay? You just, um, <laughs> just um, let me know. But it's like when you see photos of like Olympic athletes like diving off boards or running, and the faces they're pulling, like you know, yeah. they're doing really awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things where movement from like a video camera is better because. It's not a freeze frame moment, but we've got to kind of get that one moment where they have like the most neutral expression mm-hmm. they can do whilst yelling ferociously. Mm-hmm. Um, but also making sure like the weapon isn't in front of their face or something. Um, so much of it is that. Yeah, because the action is so fast paced, you can't predict it. I yeah. mean, not normally you'd. Um, you, you might, if you're photographing wildlife or something, you can anticipate what's going to happen and then maybe do a burst of a, of a lion chasing something down or whatever. But because it is so dynamic... Well, let's let's to, face it, right? By, kind of spray by the nature of combat, you yes. don't want to project what you're about to do to anyone, right? Yeah, you want exactly. everything you do to be a surprise against whoever you're fighting. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you, you, you could try and anticipate all the shots, but you you might as well just spray and pray in some in some respects for for certain instances if it is if you're deep in a battle then i mean occasionally there will be stuff you can anticipate and that's when other skills come into play so you, and how long are you what's your turnover after an event i remember yours is like free to something weeks or whatever oh no um i've just put up stuff that was taken in november i think because what you're doing is you're shooting loads, but then going to events every single week. So you're actually building up on top of what you've already done yes, yes, and yes. getting 
basically, I, I used to be able to turn around 4,000 shots within the week yeah. to get them up before the next event. Um, then I had two weekends on the trot. So there was the, the final event of Odyssey, which was PD's game a few years ago, mm-hmm. and I shot about 12,000 for that one. And then there was um, the full bank holiday weekend of renewal uh, for Curious Pastimes, and that was a similar sort of number. And that put me back by about a month and a half mm-hmm. in terms of getting through all those shots. And I, I had just haven't recovered. But I'm, I'm keeping pace, but <laughs> it's, it's trying to eat into that time that I've got um, of the backlog, really. Mm. So, uh, how, how about you? Uh, it depends on real life and also how knackered I am after an event. Yeah. Um, but I do genuinely enjoy doing it. But I... Because um, I was going like, to like bombard... Ollie with with like laughter over like like how much of a backlog he has, but I do each photo individually. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like mm-hmm. I will open each one in Photoshop. This is not how you do lot of photos, by the way. I just like you don't do it like me. Um, but like, but I said, do, do you enjoy the process? Though? I love it. I feel like I'm coloring in a picture. Is basically yeah. how I see it. <clears throat> But I think that, but I think that's that's something different, like for any workload, right? Like there's a difference yeah. between it being work and being something that you enjoy, right? Like yeah. any mountain of workload can be easy if you enjoy that process, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, well, I th- do, you, do you get the same thing when you get to a batch of photos and you've got a lot, a lot of people smiling? Do you start smiling yourself? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, and, it's great because you, you're seeing all these moments of people, and and presumably they're gonna enjoy yeah. them. So it's quite nice. Yeah, well, something that a bunch of us, a bunch of us lab photographers did last year was we actually all publicly posted about the process we all do, and everyone had something different to say. Mm. Um, and like people found it really interesting, and you know, and, and so did I, knowing how different photographers go through their photos, mm-hmm. and how we just look for different shots, and how we discard the ones that don't work first. Was there, did you find there was a lot of overlap between the way you viewed it or different photographers have a quite individual style towards their you know, decision-making process? Well, it, in the end, um, your album is as good as the edit of the album, which is what you take out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but all of us look at what shots just like are straight up blurred and stuff, you mm. know. And so there's a certain knowledge of just stuff that is either repeat or not not fit for purpose. I mean, yeah. right? we're, we're essentially doing the same thing, which is taking all these shots, picking out the good stuff, processing it, putting it up. Mm-hmm. So that the, the beginning and the end is the same. It's the middle. It's, it's how we accomplish that in the middle that is, is obviously different. And mm-hmm. makes us all unique, which is, I think, what people like, especially when a bunch of us all go to the same game. Because whilst, you know, favors could get the same moment, but entirely differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel any pressure in putting up bad shot? Like, if you put up a bad shot, you know what I mean by that? Like, do you feel pressure not to put up bad shots? I, so, it's been a bit of a debate. Um, it certainly was a few years ago of like, oh, why don't you just like... People like to see photos of themselves. I don't care if it's a bad photo. Can you just mm-hmm. put up anyway? But I'm like, no, but I care. Yeah. You know, this is like, this is also my job. Mm-hmm. And something I learned at uni is you are always judged on your worst photo. Yeah. Um, now, there are... Like, if it were up to me, I'd actually only put up about 20 or so photos from an event. Those are like my portfolio pieces. But that's not what I'm about. I do want people to enjoy mm. the album, see the story, see photos mm. of themselves, froth at each other. So I am, you know... Like putting up shots which I think are weak but not bad, mm. you know that there is a difference there, and like and you know often people will just really like those photos. Sometimes they will get no likes and go, I was justified in thinking that was weak. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But sometimes I'll pull a photo that I was wasn't sure about, and then people say really nice things about it. I go, actually, I'm seeing this photo in a new light now. I see why this works as a storytelling piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've always thought there's a sort of an audience. For and there's an individual audience for every photo, and sometimes there's no audience at all. But for the photographer, you have to consider um, basically the subjects first. Is that likely to be uh, a, a, a shot that the the player of that character is going to enjoy, mm-hmm. or or if it holds any meaning for them? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have further back from that the audience of the the individual. You then have the people who are at the same event or around that situation. 
people who play the same game, and then you go back to LARPers in general, and then the general public. So when you're talking about shots that would speak to a, a member of the public who has no idea of what the hobby is about, then, yeah, you're, the number of shots in an album is probably far lower than you put up. But when you go through those layers, you will, you, you get to shots that are meaningful for somebody. Yeah, interestingly, yeah. I... I'm one of those people that I don't really care if I have Facebook open at work. So uh, mm. I'll sometimes have like one of your photos up at work mm. and people will walk past that aren't involved in life and they'll be interested in the image, right? Yeah. Just because it will be something that is striking or unique or interesting that, that someone that has no interest in that one, I'll be like, yeah, it's, it's LARPing. And they'll yeah. be quite surprised that it isn't a more professional or like a... Like a TV show, for example, or something of that yeah, nature. That's because always of a really the, good compliment. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, what Ollie was saying about um, the kind of breaking down of the audiences. So my Facebook is for the LARPers yeah. um, and for the people who play the game, the friends of the people. Then I have a Tumblr, which is what posts, which is what my blog is hosted on. And that I usually put up like ten or twenty photos from the game. Yeah, those are really. Th- I thank love you. those. I thank absolutely you. love those little sets and you do. Thank you. And those that that is once again bringing it back a bit. And then there's my website where there's about I think fifteen photos from every game I've ever attended, like like in one album. So and like that's really really narrowing it down. And that is the album for the general public. Mm. Like obviously it's for LARPers as well, and it is that kind of best of my work but I have to think about who's looking at it and when it's a professional photography website it's probably going to be someone who's never done it before Mm -hmm. Um, do you find that there are some pictures that you take that you think aren't going to be that great when you take them and then when you get back to the edit they're Mm -hmm. like holy moly that is that's the one of the 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 whole weekend or whatever there are certainly shots that I guess I overlooked um, or like I got well, I got this because it was like a moment that I framed and then like through the retouching I do or where it's placed in the album, it becomes so much stronger. Mm-hmm. I, I think definitely stuff with where it's placed in the album um, can really change what an image is. Oh, so you're talking like album tracks almost where you put the song in the album, right? Like where you place yeah, them within the uh, album or photographs? Like the most obvious one would be a battle. Someone gets knocked down or something and then someone runs over a screen because s- someone's dying. Uh, you're talking about like the narrative of yes, the photos. Yes, yeah. Um, and because it's a sequence like that, it be, and I say it might once again be a weak a weak photo, but as a narrative, it's I've, really I've strong. I realised you've got me with that. that <laughs> I completely, I can't, you, you you trickster. That is, I've, I've <laughs> been through that journey looking for your guys' photographs. It's Aha! really interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of just think they're sequential when you look at them, but they might not be necessarily, right? Like, I've, yeah. I've definitely done it on Tumblr posts as well, where I can kind of tweak the order a bit, because I do try and be as honest as possible, mm-hmm. but I may have tweaked it a couple of times, but like that's often more effort than it's worth anyway. But, mm-hmm. but with Tumblr, there's definitely a story I'm trying to tell. Um, like and often it's the colours like what colours are working together but sometimes it's like if I put this photo at the end it's going to look like it had a really tragic ending or something mm. because of how people scroll down the page um, and every death is a tragedy in LARP as we can oh yeah absolutely yeah. people love crying over <laughs> dead characters um, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I was about to say dead friends and like that's incorrect <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so, so I tend to put everything up on Facebook in the same way, and um, everything goes up on my current website. Well, I have started to put um, there's a what, Empire Showcase, so the first album in the Empire ones are, are the, the the really nice shots that I've got over the years, mm-hmm. um, which which again is trying to pull that audience of those are the ones you show your friends if you want to get them into laughing or something, show mm-hmm. them that because the main albums there's quite a lot of stuff that is more meaningful for the people in the shot and less well, meaningful. I like your website yeah. a lot the way, because I went down a rabbit hole and looking through your stuff. I was like, um, <laughs> I started me. looking at it and then I was like, there were so many different LARPs yes. and different events at those LARPs. And I kind of looked through and I was just like, there's a Wild West LARP. There's like a, <laughs> yes. there's like oh, a, yeah. like a, um, like a Fallout one. Uh, yeah. You know, there's all the different LARPs you can possibly imagine. There's, if you're sitting there thinking, whatever my specific geek niche is, and there's never going to be a lot for that, there probably is something similar to it, mm-hmm. right? Like, it was amazing right. to see the, the... 
for me, it was an amazing window into how much there's possible at LARP, you know? Mm. Is, is there any, do you, I, want, I don't want to say favourites, but is there any, like, type of events you really like doing, you know? Well, there's one event, so you mentioned, like, niche stuff. I never knew I liked Wild West, and then I started photographing a Wild West game. I loved it so much, I stopped photographing and started crewing it full-time mm-hmm. because I wanted to do it. And then, thankfully, Ollie came along to some games, and I got suppose of me. Nice. Um, but... Um, there are kind of like like I will say like Empire is great because it looks different every event. I really like colourful games, um, you know that have those that those stories, those really dynamic colours and really strong characters that come through in the design. Like games that allow you to do that, I always personally really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's I mean there's so many um, ones out there. It, it kind of depends on whether I'm looking at it from the point of view of enjoying photographing it or enjoying being there. Um, it, it also depends on whether I'm an in-character mm. presence as, a, as an NPC with a camera or even playing. There was one game I play every year, um, Legends of the Wasteland, but I'm playing with a camera. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it, it kind of depends. Certainly if you're, if you're involved as an, an NPC with a camera, it tends to be a little bit more fun to do rather than just being a passive yeah. observer all the time. Yeah, it's interesting that when you're talking about putting down your camera and actually playing as part of it, there must be moments that you're like, because I was going back to this, when we talked about it earlier, these intimate moments or like special moments that you're witnessing, there must be moments where you're like, man, I wish I was doing that or part oh. of that. Yeah. So sometimes it's an advantage of having played or being a player of LARP to be a photographer because you can see the dynamic of how things are happening. You can work out where action is going to happen based on conversations and other times I find myself just looking at a situation unfold without actually taking photographs of it because it is such a, a pivotal moment I'm going oh drought I've got to actually be taking photographs of this oh, rather gosh, than yeah. just watching with my tongue hanging out <laughs> yeah. I watch characters yell at each other I'm just like oh this is really cool wait oh, I'm oh, literally oh, here yeah. with my oh. out on my yes. just standing here watching like my own movie yes. like wait no I'm meant to be capturing this yeah yeah it happens all the time yeah <laughs> it kind of leads me on to like uh, I wanted to ask about are there shots that you can think of that you missed, that you wish you'd got. Oh, always. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you've got to shrug, and it's not like we're shooting a film and you can retake mm-hmm. um, the thing. You have one one chance at it. If you miss something, you can't get precious because you miss so much. Yeah. I mean, Could you, 40 guys, just before you did that great charge, can you just go back to yes. where you were? And you know that when you oh, said yeah. charge and you will charge at the same time with the same expression, could you just do that again, please? Yeah. Yes. Or it, the worst is, is when there's just... There's a perfect shot lined up, then someone walks in your way and stops. Like, mm. yeah, so, I can't so, tell you to move, but I really want you to move. Yes, so quite often when we're lining up shots, people will notice us and stop. Um, whereas the best thing is for them just to walk past. Yeah. Because our peripheral vision is such that we can time the shot. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, as I say, we're not precious about getting any particular moment. We like getting lots of individual moments, but... If we miss any individual one because someone's walking in front, we're not going to get upset about it. Yeah, sure. But but it's if you if you walk in front of us and stop, that's that's when we might might. So glare at you. rage happens. <laughs> uh, there is one shot that I can remember. I really tried to get and I just couldn't get there in time. It was an Empire event. It was at the site previous to the one we're at now, and like it was raining so heavily and like people were walking past kind of huds up and there were these three kids uh running like running away from me and they each had a different color cloak on and it was so cute. <laughs> oliver's nodding by the way like in this yeah yeah and like you and like the the, the grass like it was all gray and blue the ground mm. like everyone just looked grim but there were these three colorful coats i think it was like blue red and yellow or green or something just running and they were obviously children and I tried so hard to get I tried so hard to run after them and I miss it and I was like the, like that one like haunts me I wake up in cold sweat I remember I could have sugar that shot I remember the best shot I'd ever got and that is like the one that that I still remember to this day that I didn't get well, if it's, I, I, I assume it's like, for me as a player, there are some moments I wish I had done X, Y, or Z. It must be a similar thing for you guys, yeah? Right? Yeah. Um, so how often do you guys actually get to like, because you said you, all of you get to do one event per year, probably, as a player. Oh, as a player, yes, yes. Uh, it, it was, yeah, I, for the last four years, I've done one a year. Mm. 
as a player. Interesting. And how about you? I've like been a bit more careful because um, because I started to lose the love of LARP for a while, and I realised it was because I just hadn't played in a while. So last year I played, um, I think, three or four games. Um, there are a few like Empire player events that I attend as a player playing my character because she's been ar- she's been around for so long now that I find her naturally quite easy to play. But I started playing a couple of games, and in one of the games I played, I stabbed a god. So you know, <laughs> maybe it's safer for everyone that I don't play because day aside is an issue, isn't it? You know, <laughs> um, it does happen? But yeah, um, and I know there are games. There was a game I went to which I was meant to photograph, but I was feeling like quite ill. Uh, not enough to not attend, but too ill to take photos. And I ended up chatting to an NPC for so much of the game. And I remember thinking to myself, I would not have the freedom to just sit in this room and chat mm-hmm. and get all this plot and all this development because I would have like one eye on everything else mm-hmm. and be thinking to myself, I should be outside, I should be getting what's going on. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't be sitting here for an hour I, talking to this guy. I shot, uh, I used to do uh, video a lot and I used to shoot a lot of weddings. Yeah. And it took me like a bunch of weddings to not be in work mode at a wedding. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like I'd go to a wedding and it would be, oh yeah, I can just go to the bar and get a drink or not be anywhere or be thinking about anything. I'm right? like that with photography. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm like backseat photography. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the photographer's like, oh, oh yeah, I'm that guy that would go up to a wedding video guy and be like, oh, what kit are you rocking there? You know what I mean? Uh, and just talk uh, to him about uh, what I don't doing. ask that because I know, like, I don't want to Are, do, you, are like... you being paid to, to do the whole reception as well? Or, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, just the like, worst guy uh, at weddings. Like, but I want to be like, oh god, this thing's really cute, man. What are they doing over there? Like, mm-hmm. come here. Mm-hmm. But, like, I I, it, I'm almost there with taking that kind of photography head off, but it happens a lot. I I have been known to reach down for a camera that isn't there. Um, I'm like, Wait, where's my camera? Is it my tent? Oh, I didn't bring it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I never have that. I always have a camera, even, <laughs> yeah. even when I'm playing. I, I can't. I have. It has to be all or nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, just to, we'll kind of close out now, but we'll kind of just. What would you say to someone that, like, just a, a few words of encouragement, like, to just people maybe that are, are thinking about trying to do LARP photography and any words of advice that you'd maybe give to them? Like, I think one that's come off fairly strongly is go LARPing first mm. from the sounds of things before you try and be a photographer, yeah. experience it as a player. Right? I wasn't going to say that, but yes, that is pretty much um, a very good suggestion is go and see what it's like, see how the, how the, the flow of a game is mm-hmm. so that you can then work out and certainly go along with the with photographer's eye and observe and see how you might shoot something. But, yeah, go and try it out first mm-hmm. and then, then pick up a camera. Yeah. I wish that's advice I could dip, but that is the exact opposite of what I did. Uh, I mean, it worked for me, because I, but I went with a goal in mind. I knew exactly what I wanted to get. Um, so, like, if you do want to go and just, and just try and capture LARP, and we do get a lot of uni students asking us, like, do try and go with, this is what I want to get. It's not just, I want to try and shoot, laugh and see what it's like, because you will get lost in it. But if it is, I want to photograph the people who go there. I want to photograph the events that happen there. I want to photograph the atmosphere, the community. Like, try and have that one thing you really want to get. Mm-hmm. Um, that isn't just battles, because we can't always allow people on the battlefields for their first event but um try and have that one thing that you really really want to get and then you can just focus in on if you get other things that's fantastic you know Mm -hmm. but it just means you won't get lost and intimidated um i do actually agree that um trying to attend an event first just to see what it's like and kind of see how into it people are so you're not kind of going oh gosh they're all ignoring me am i in the way Mm -hmm. um but you know either routes are valid uh, just try and go with a goal in mind outside of I just want to try taking photos how, how do you how do you get involved is there someone at PD that you message about this is there a way to get into the photography world there yeah if you type in photography on the wiki you will be taken to the photography page and you will have the email address and you will speak to the head of photography there uh, most games will have someone you can contact even if they don't have a head of photography like Empire does because Empire is quite big they will have someone who can give you the okay or mm-hmm. say any restrictions um, and just kind of say why you want to do it yeah wicked that's yeah. awesome hey um, just uh, I speak for myself and I just want to speak for the whole community thank you both so much for your hard work it's, um, you. 
it, it genuinely okay. adds a huge amount and people that I speak to one of the huge highlights of after going to an event is looking for the photographs and interestingly not because they're in them right because it mm-hmm. brings back this like the, the moment that you were there or the emotions that you felt or or, or even yeah. just a broader feeling of being at an event again is something so special that it's it's hard to get back and then despite it's it's a real gift to be able to give it out in photography you know so uh, that's yeah. awesome thank you yeah. Yeah. quite a few years ago someone at a, a, a it was a Warhammer 40,000 event they, they said to me at the beginning of the what, second or third event that they'd look through the album recently of the previous event and it all just came back to them so yeah. it's nice to be that's why I like to preserve the, uh, the sort of narrative that goes on is so mm-hmm. that yeah, you, you can just relive that event quite quite easily a few years down the line wonderful anyway guys thank you so much thank I hope you for having enjoyed us this episode. Thank you. Um, if you like stuff like this and there's other things that you would like us to cover then please let us know because um, we would like to talk to more wonderful people like this in the future so uh, thanks for listening and uh, I hope you have a wonderful time and happy LARPing Hello, don't mind us. Art. Lovely. Creativity made form. Thought provoking, challenging, and a true window to the soul. I've always found it fascinating how much knowledge is passed on through the art. And sometimes it can be a warning. And here we are. This tapestry is called The Tower of Anarchy. As you can see, it depicts a legend of sorts, a mystical device forged in different planes of existence that gave the owner power beyond limits. Its maker and the person to wield this power was the Grand Magi of Anarch. First, here, look, it was used to help fix the world's problems. But soon, as with all power, it corrupted its owner. Here you can see the great famines, plagues and floods Earthquakes that shook the whole world. The Magi was cast out, trapped within his own tower, and then sealed within with a magical key. His key was then split into three pieces, which were then sent to be hidden and forgotten. One of which we discovered in Longbridge. I do not believe it was chance that brought us to it. We must find the other pieces before our delightful competitor has a chance to complete the key and open the tower. The world as we know it may depend on it.